and welcome to my Xbox and me episode 264. I am one of your hosts, MC Fixer, alongside the one and only Too Fresh Crash. How are you, Crash? Hello, hello. I'm doing good. You know, can't uh, can't complain too much. It feels How about like yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you sound like you've had a fantastic week. You sound amazing. It's been one of those so weeks. Disgusting. It's been one of those weeks, honestly, where just like life stuff on top of like not really wanting to play video games, but playing video games mm. is my job and what I do to make mm. a living, to make an income. And you know, when you just like, just didn't want to get out of bed the last few days, just ah, ah. I hear that. Just one of them days. So I went and bought myself a new unit. Well done. I need to put that back. Much better. Does the unit make you feel better? It fell down again. Fine, I'm not doing it again. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, yeah, it did. I'll be honest with you. Like, I thought... I've wanted to change the... the so, if you're watching the video version, I've got a new... Uh, audio version, sorry. Uh, I've got a new unit with, like... A new, I've got a, a new microphone as well. But, yeah, I've got, I got some new bits in the house. So, um... Yeah, I don't know. I like buying things, Crash. I don't I don't buy expensive things, but I like buying things. I think most people like buying things. I think the problem with most people is that they like buying expensive things. Don't say you 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 uh you don't buy expensive things. What do I what do I buy that's expensive? Bought that TV, bro. That's my biggest purchase ever. Yeah, you didn't need that TV. Uh, <laughs> shut up, fool. That's totally different. I'm, I'm just messing with you. Totally different. But yeah, so I bought the unit just to change the setup around. Um, but yeah, just it's been it's been one of them weeks. I've been messed around a bit by some stuff, and then FIFA mm. wouldn't. My EA access wouldn't work for FIFA, so I couldn't actually mm. play FIFA the ten hour trial beforehand. So I've only been able to play FIFA like yesterday and today, and it's just yeah, it's been yeah, it's been one of them days, you know, one of those one of those those days, those weeks, those moments, you know. I hear that. You know? Yeah. Every, everybody has those moments. Everybody has those days. Everybody you know, who sings that song, Crash? Uh, Britney Spears. Come on, there was Hannah Montana, I think. I'm not sure though. Hannah Montana. <laughs> Same I thing have no for clue. you. <laughs> Um, for people who don't know, My Xbox and Me is our weekly Xbox podcast here on YouTube.com slash My Xbox and Me and across all podcast services. You can get the show early over on Patreon.com slash MC Fixer. Uh, and also don't forget to go subscribe, uh, go subscribe to the YouTube channel, YouTube.com slash My Xbox and Me. We're currently less than 40 subscribers away from hitting the big 1K. So yeah. Yeah, we've, we've obviously seen a tremendous growth um, from lots of different avenues. But if you are someone who maybe is new to the channel, someone who has an influence out there, maybe you're someone that can help us share our podcast. I don't know. We've got a lot of new listeners, Crash. I'm noticing, I'm noticing more and more people listen to this show. That scares me more and more, Crash. It scares me. <laughs> yeah. I, I just want to point out last week's episode, just on YouTube, not even like everything combined, just on YouTube without like no promos or anything. 450 views when i first checked on it yeah i was like oh yeah that's it's, weird it's different it's different for us yeah. it's different for us yeah uh don't forget to go rate us on itunes as well or wherever it is you listen to this show give us the big five stars you know come on you know it doesn't take two seconds we are giving away a headset if we hit 100 reviews did you remember to check america did you check america for me grush um I, I had checked that day and i didn't find the time to tell you i'll check again right now Rubbish. I I have it right here. Right. Rubbish. Um, Rubbish. Crash. I don't know how you check. The you reviews. can't check it through the app. That's why I know you're lying. But I thought I'd let you just keep going. All right. I I literally have. <laughs> no, I checked it on iTunes. I opened the podcast app this time. Oh, you can't check it on the podcast app. Yeah, I understand. Last week I checked it on iTunes because I couldn't find it on the podcast uh... app. And this week again, I just went to the podcast app. You're an idiot. <laughs> You're an idiot. Yep. Let's give a shout out to our Patreon producer, of course, Aaron God. Thank you for helping the show keep going, keeping the lights on, and keeping us, you know, keeping keeping us alive. So thank you very much, Aaron God. We really do appreciate your support on each episode. Thirty-five reviews. Thirty-five. Most of them, five stars. What do you mean, most of them? Most of them are five stars. What do you mean, most of them? How many four stars we got? None. How many three stars? None. How many two stars? None. How many one stars do we have? 
I'm not entirely sure. I don't know how to like cycle it between what's there. Okay. You're um, scaring me, Crash. You're scaring it me. It just says 35 ratings. Most of them are five stars, but the one star has some in it. One star? But here's the thing. Those are irrelevant reviews because they didn't even say anything. But they didn't say one why it's a one star. star. One star. Wow, that's disrespectful. Clearly before I started doing the podcast. We've been for a lot of hosts, so that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, topic of the show this week is all about the Xbox Series X hard drive versus the PlayStation 5's hard drive crash. Uh, in case you missed it, uh, some big, big, big news has come out all about the uh, PlayStation's hard drive. Um, and I thought, why don't we uh, just sit down and compare the two? Uh, we've got a question that came in for it, so here we go. It says... So the Xbox Series X has roughly 802 gigabytes of user usable storage after the OS. And we just found out the PS5 will have 664 gigabytes of usage storage after the OS. This is not from me. This is from Sarah Squid. So don't quote me on this. What the fuck is going on with both Sony and Microsoft that takes that the OS takes up almost 200 gigabytes? I'm not a software designer, but Windows 10 on my PC takes up 32 gigabytes, and I've seen macOS range between 30 to 60 gigabytes as well. What the fuck is going on with the console developers that they can't optimize or compress their files and reserve 20% of the storage themselves just for the OS? At this point, both uh, should stop ma uh, marketing one terabyte and respectively 825 gigabytes uh, and just market what people will actually be able to use from sarah squid sarah why do you have to be so angry you know we've got new listeners i'm trying i'm trying not to swear so much you know i'm gonna start censoring um, you i'm gonna start censoring you you know I, I i think fix sent that question i think fix was angry i was angry of course of course yeah. Fresh, what do you make of the uh, the PS5's hard drive coming in at a, a whopping 664 gigabytes of space? What do you make of it? It's it's small. It is. I think they're. I I think that's exceptionally small. I think the Xbox is small as well. It the thing is like these two aren't necessarily like really small. No, man, man. the the PlayStation's is small. Do not disrespect Xbox like that. Do not no. Do hey, not, what is it? What is, 802? Yeah. That's pretty small. It's, uh, let me explain. Let me, let me explain why Compared it's small. Compared to his comparator, it's not small at all. Okay, but it's not just in a comparison to competitor. It's a comparison to what people are used to. People are used to a terabyte plus with their externals and everything. I'm not saying that it's, it's small compared to its competitor. It's bigger. It's better than its competitor in terms of size. In what, compar in what world do you say people are used to? The Xbox... The Xbox... Um... One X only had seven hundred and ninety nine yeah. gigs. So unless you're comparing mm, it to you know other, if you're you're correct. unless you're, you're comparing it correct. to other PC, if you're comparing it to PC players, then maybe I can even, hear your argument. But console but even, console players should have expected this. You're correct. The, the you're one correct. the one thing I will, I will say is what disappoints me on Sony's behalf is they are bold faced liars. And if your hard drive is that small, you should have put that out at front. That small. That is. Yeah. I assumed. I had assumed the mm. um, the eight hundred and twenty five gig was a one terabyte drive. It, they were actually yeah. marking it correctly. But where did you even find eight hundred twenty five gigabytes SSDs? Like, what the they, hell happened there? They gave the reasoning as to why. I I don't remember their exact reasoning, but they gave the reasoning. It's more optimal, whatever, whatever. I think it ultimately comes down to price, and that's where they found like the best way to cut their price. So, and be able to sell it at the 500 point. I see a lot of people talking about how, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just a guy that makes an Xbox yeah. podcast for the last six years. But from my understanding, um, the OS is pretty big for some reason. I, yeah. don't, I don't understand that part. But I heard that the overhead um, for a lot of the storage space is because of its quick resume features. So I heard from, from, again, from the conversations I've had or what I've been reading, it's the fact that you need to have that s a certain amount of space. Again, I, I'm talking very much not on, I'm not a technical guy in this way. Um, there are people out there that can speak better on this than me, but this is just what I'm saying and what I think I've read properly. Um, if the Xbox uh, One, uh, the Xbox Series X, sorry, um, can do 10 games quick uh, respawn, 
quick resume. My apology, respawn yeah. like they died. Uh, quick resume. They need to have storage space in place to allow those games to sit on the SSD. Hence why it takes up so much room, and hence why you can't you can't use that storage. It needs to be there all of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's that, and then there's also you have to remember consoles aren't like PC, where your console does one thing and it does it very well. And then on top of that, you have to remember that there needs to be storage place to be able to stream your from your consoles, whether you use that or not. The console has to be capable of that. It has to have the programs there. It has to have all that storage space. And that goes with almost everything your console can do. The screenshots, the video clip recording, all that stuff needs to be somewhere there. And I'd imagine there's stuff we don't even consider that needs its storage space allocated there as well. I would, I would have thought, I, again, I don't know. I'm talking out my butt. But I would assume, like, uh, sharing, um, being able to, like, record gameplay clips, right? Stuff like that. All of that stuff must eat up space in one way or another, I assume. Yeah. I assume. I don't know. I do, I do think Sony has uh, absolutely dropped the ball humongously yeah. in terms of the way, not only in the way they've marketed their PlayStation in terms of its story space, but in the way that Xbox had already thought about all this where they have an external card that is like hey this is what you're gonna have to buy if you want to have more yeah. stories this is what you're not gonna like it but at least you understand it with playstation we don't even know how we can expand our playstations it's well, some they, hard drives may work but it has yeah. to be a high you can't market something like that and expect people people are giving xbox such a hard time for its naming right which i'd say is probably a little bit more important than a uh, external uh ssd right. but but in the same it's, regard, it's you've got to market things correctly. Yeah, no, I, I think this is just I, I agree with you. It's just messy, messy marketing on Sony's part. And it's it's very confusing. Like what hard drive? As far as I'm aware, like there's actually no hard drive that's capable of doing that. So as of right now, there is no replacement hard drive, no bigger hard drive you can get. Um, I thought I thought and, they said there were some there was a, I read an article the day this news dropped that there was one okay. hard one MVMA SSD something whatever um, there was one that was able to they think it will be the one that is capable. There's one. Got it. Okay. But, Interesting. And then, but then even then, it's not it's not external because I'm not pretty confirmed. sure you have to replace it as well. I haven't it got a clue. the spot of that. I haven't if got I'm, a clue. If I'm not mistaken, I could be completely wrong about that. But if I remember from the whole press conference they had talking about the console. But the problem is we're talking about this and we have no clue. We're not 100% on anything because my, uh, Sony's messaging on this is just really muddy. Where Microsoft has been concise and for some reason has gotten flack to a certain degree for that. And Sony sort of scraped by even though i've seen a it lot just, of people the tide is slowly turning yeah it is no slowly... yeah I've, I've seen i've yeah. seen slowly i've seen more and more people just like randomly on sony posts like i'm done i'm canceling my pre-order i'm Da, 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 Which they're this, talking that, shit. The they're third. gonna. They're not gonna. Probably they nothing. probably didn't cancel their pre. They probably didn't cancel their pre order. Or they never had a pre order in the first place. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I think um, for me, it's interesting to finally see certain people turn a little bit, yeah. ever so slightly, ever so slightly. It's. I've, I want a PlayStation. I love PlayStation exclusives. I love PlayStation first party. But we're looking at now. We're looking at hard drive space. Xbox yeah. is superior. Even if the load times on the PS5 are that much better, I personally think, because we've seen load times now on the uh, Xbox uh, Series X, compared to we haven't seen yet from a Western point of view on a uh, PlayStation 5 yet. Even they say Call of Duty can load in at 5 seconds on the PS5 and takes 10 seconds on an Xbox, yeah? Yeah. I'll take the extra space, please. Yeah, honestly, because I, I, the only games I think that will truly, truly, truly super optimize, um, up be optimized for the SSD to the to the, the degree that that Sony want it to be are Sony first parties. Yeah. So I, absolutely, I, I think I think that's what Sony's banking on, right? Is their first parties to be their main draw? Which, to be fair, is what not really what helped them with the PS4 generation because Microsoft. No, PS4 just dropped the ball. The yeah. Yeah, Microsoft fumbled the ball in the beginning. Um, but yeah, so I, I think they're trying to carry with that and it'll work to a degree for them. But I do think that in the trajectory we're going, we might see 
a closer competition a lot sooner than we might have assumed between the two. Um, because I've, I've been seeing it, and it's not something you necessarily see as often scrolling like randomly. People on Sony's posts, people who claim that they're Sony fanboys, and who knows, maybe they're not. That could just be all a load of bull. Yeah, yeah. Who knows? Sort of turning on the platform slowly and slowly. Like, oh, uh, saves aren't cross. Uh, the storage, all the all these issues, There's slowly lots. creeping up. That's the thing. Yeah. I think that's the thing that surprises me the most when it comes to the the competition. You know when like we do the spreadsheets, like you see IGN yeah. come out with these spreadsheets of like Xbox versus PlayStation, and we don't get like a true, um, a true, a true full experience with it, where it's like backwards compatibility. Xbox has it over them because again they've muddled they've muddled the wording. You can't mm. muddle the wording on any of this stuff when it comes to Microsoft hard drive space. Okay, they wasn't fully transparent on it, but they didn't they didn't gag anybody with it uh for its previews yeah. so now we have that information i'm not saying that so we did gag anyone but i'm saying that we have that information now right yeah um what's next you've got backwards you've got crossplay they xbox have been yeah. very transparent with crossplay across all generations whatever play where you want blah 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 yeah um there's still there's still more that i'm just i'm not thinking off the top of my head of like Xbox, tick, 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 tick. PlayStation, yeah, we've got great first parties. That's literally where all I can think of of why yeah. I'm buying a PlayStation day one. That's it. First parties. And honestly, like with the and, and, storage space, like, go ahead. And when I say that's it, that's all it needs to be as well, by the way. That's what I was going to say. Like, yeah. it really just needs to be able to run first parties. For me, like, my PlayStation has been the first party machine for a while. Yeah. With a few exceptions of third party games, for the most part, I get them on my Xbox. Um, so I don't think I, I maybe maybe Sony looks at it and like we're a first party. I don't think that's the case though. That <laughs> they view themselves as a first party machine. I no, think this really was no, this ultimately, not. at least with the storage size, comes to this is the way we can make this console an affordable price and compete with our competitors. Right. Because as far so as we bad. know, it's the SSDs so are expensive to make. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think I agree. I, to I purchase think... sixty four gigabytes is it's small right yeah it is really small now um, that you can compare it to to consoles that's small compared to consoles yeah so yeah, no i i completely misspoke earlier i won't be completely honest you're absolutely right i'm glad i got you um, on one let's go me let's go I, I i i you don't get me very often fixed but i have to admit it. Um, that's not true you get me a decent it's true i'm the best uh okay we got i want to go there <laughs> we got another question coming in about this which was from mr mitch george and he says with the news that the Xbox Series X will have roughly 80% available on its hard drive to uh, consumers, um, are you at all worried about the available storage on the Xbox Series S? With it only having 512 gigabyte hard drive, an expandable card could be in the near future for early adopters. Am I worried about it? No, I'm getting the Xbox Series X. <laughs> <laughs> like am yeah. i am i worried about it for consumers no should consumers be worried about it it depends on why you bought the box in the first place did you buy the box for storage space or did you buy the box because you're only gonna buy you're only gonna play maybe three or four games on it a year so chopping and changing isn't a big deal or you're in the same position as me uh, where you already have an external SSD and move in a game that they say is now takes around 12 minutes, maybe a little bit less depending on the game and the size and stuff. You don't mind waiting that 12 minutes to move a game over. Like it's not yeah. a big deal to you. We don't know what the official numbers are on the S if I'm not mistaken. I couldn't find them anywhere anyway. Um, I think it's going to come in around 400 and something from, from, from the knowledge of or what I've read so far. Um, the Xbox series uh, S can't do as many or doesn't do as quick uh, as many quick resumes as the x could do which makes perfect sense in my head um without yeah. having less ram and stuff so it, let's say it can only do five quick resumes but it only takes up 100 gig space or 112 they say so it comes in at 400 gigabytes i think that'd be a pretty decent trade-off if that is that if if what i'm reading is the right thing um yeah. that seems like a pretty good trade-off yeah um i'm like I'm used to having to delete stuff. I haven't had an external drive for either of my consoles That's ever. Nuts. That's I've crazy to me. I've deleted and installed games all the time, <laughs> over and over. I'm not... It's going to be annoying, 
but I've been dealing it for so long with it for so long that it's not really gonna bother. You're gonna buy an external. I promise you, if you the and you're getting an S, right? External? You're getting an S, right? Yeah. It, no, you can't. No, you. I don't think. Okay. I don't think you'll buy an SSD external. I think okay. you will buy an external, an external drive. Drive. Yes, yes. A transfer. One hundred percent. I already was thinking like I'll probably do that at some point. Not the two hundred dollar one. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah at no. that point, I'd rather start saving for an X or whatever. You know. Should have just bought an X in the first place. Honestly, after. <laughs> Maybe. Nah. It's fine. <laughs> I love how you just went from yep, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not gonna agree with him because I hate <laughs> agreeing with him, but uh you're probably right. You're probably uh, right. I never those words never came out of my mouth. I just want everybody to know I never said those words. Your face said it all, my friend. Your face said yeah, it maybe. all. Honestly, I think I, to me, I feel like a lot of a lot of the hardcore first adopters who bought an S are buying it because um because they want an Xbox, but they don't want to play. They're not going to play all their third parties on it. They play a third parties on PlayStation. So that 400 gig, they say again. I'm speaking out my bike. Could be 404. It could be 405. Who knows? Um, space seems like it might just be enough to deal with it. Um, but again, we'll have to wait and see. Games are only getting bigger. 4K texture packs, things like that. They're only getting bigger. What if? Uh, what if the SSD for the Series S ends up being 302? That'd be bad. That would be bad. That that's that would be That'd bad. Be really I don't bad, think. Right? I don't think it I, I will don't be. Think it'll be that, I don't think it will. Yeah. Be. But what about if it goes in at like the three fifty mark? I still. I think anything. Un, I think anything under four hundred is bad. Got it. I'm. I'm really. I'm really interested to see what number that comes in at. Because like for me, it, I don't play Call of Duty anymore, so I don't care about that game. But for people that do. That game eats up a lot of space on uh, on the console. Someone said that to me the other day. It's like I would I would love to play with you when we play on the education, but it takes up too much space to even hold it. And I was just like, oh, yeah, that sucks. Yeah, but yeah. So um, I'm I'm very very curious. I think that will uh, that will be very very telling. Like the the whole should people be worried? I think it's hard to say without knowing what the exact size is. I think 400 is like it's workable, right? I think once you get anything under that, I agree. It's it's a little bit troubling. I don't think Microsoft will do that. But then again, maybe there is no other option. They want it to come in at an affordable rate. And this is how they make the S as affordable as it is. It is a $300 console, right? So, um, Next question was a Patreon question um, from Robbie. Robbie says, have you thought about doing a preview SSD, SSS, RSS, sorry, B, directly from Patreon to make it easier for supporters to listen to the podcast from Robbie. Rob, I will look into it. We spoke about it beforehand, um, but I didn't want you to think that I wasn't going to answer your question here. I will look into it to try and figure that out for you, and uh, thank you for bringing it to my attention. So I will definitely do that as quick as I can. Next one is, with the Xbox Series X having a noticeable improvement, on the current library of games in regards to the both resolution and frame rate, do you believe those that are playing on previous generations of Xbox hardware will be at a subsequent disadvantage when playing against Series X players due to the massive frame rate advantage? Will this cause an issue for cooperative, uh, competitive shooters and fighting games, or like with PC uh, gamers and crossplay with Xbox One owners? Uh, have the option to toggle if they want to play with Xbox Series X owners from Don't Give a Bit. Rush, what do you think? This is a weird non-issue issue. This isn't a problem on PC. I don't think Microsoft's going to treat it as a problem. I don't think most developers are going to treat it as a problem. This will be something that like somebody who doesn't play on older hardware or doesn't play with people with older hardware will view as a problem. So mainly console players will view this as a problem. PC players have been dealing with this for a long time, and it doesn't end up being an issue. And in some cases, even playing on lower resolution actually makes you be able to see stuff visually easier as opposed to playing on the highest definition. So who knows how it'll be. I don't think they'll split it. I don't think they want to splinter their player base, especially for a smaller a game with a smaller player base. But even something like Call of Duty, like that's a casual game, no matter how competitive it gets, unless you're playing in the pro scene. Yep. That is a casual game. That's literally so. what I was about to say. I think, unfortunately, we all get super intertwined with the industry, and 
and we watch esports and we and we we understand the competitive nature of the difference in in fighting games you've got to think of it as a sport in my opinion which is like that matters only to the one percenters yep. the one percenters there is no one percenter out there who's going to be like i'm not upgrading to the xbox series x and you're going to force me to play it like no that's not how it works like if you're a pro gamer, you're going to be playing on the best hardware. You're not even going to be playing on Xbox. You're going to be playing on PC. If we're being honest. Um, go on. I know there's, I know there's a pro scene in, in consoles. I no, know, I, but... no, I wasn't even going to say that. I wasn't even going to say not, not even necessarily the best hardware. It's the best way for you to aim. Like in Counter Strike, I'm pretty sure if you play with one of the lower resolutions, it's easier to aim, and most pros play on that. I, mean, I could like, be same mistaken. with Rainbow. I mean, there's stuff with Rainbow. Yeah. I see like a lot of people run at a lower resolution on Rainbow for the pixel yeah. perfect type things like that. Um, yeah, I, I agree with Crash, to be honest with you, where this is a non-starter, where it's like, this is not a big deal. This will not be blown yeah. out of proportion. Nobody cares. No, like, yeah. generally, you're going to have maybe, like, when I say nobody, I'm talking about from a broader, like, sense. Like, no, like... It, it, when There'll the, be somebody who plays on their Xbox One X, and they die, and they're like, that person on the Series X killed me again. God damn it, you know? But that's yeah. not really going to be a... a, a big issue to be honest you know if you want if you want to like we all know this already right like that's like so do i have a, i have a more advantage over call of duty players because i've got 144 hertz one hour when i play on pc like yeah but it only matters to like the one i generally think it, it only matters to the really one percenters you want to know the bigger thing is that you could buy the best mouse the best keyboard the best monitor all the best things it doesn't make you a good player Game if you're up. not a good player. <laughs> and the same thing is going to apply to console. Yep. I, I think this is very... I, I, I understand the question. And I didn't even think of this until I, I read this question earlier. And it makes sense why some people would be worried about it. But, like, this has been a thing on PC who? for so long. Who, who does it make sense for? People who play on old consoles who can't upgrade. And people who play call of duty religiously and competitively in a casual scene because so there are people like that competitively on a casual scene okay, yeah, okay, 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 there okay, are yeah, people yeah, like yeah, that yeah. right okay. and so they'll be worried about it like oh if I don't upgrade to the next because they're the same people who bought a headset way before it was normal for people to be when back, way back with like turtle beaches and stuff like that they were buying the turtle beaches they were buying Bro. the sticks on your controller and all that can we stuff. talk about turtle beaches for a second yeah. how did turtle beach they used to control the market like, Cheap. they were... No, no, what I'm saying is, I'm not asking how they did. I'm saying, what the hell happened to them? I, no, I, they, they, just, they were just, cheap headsets, so they stopped, <laughs> people stopped buying them. That's true. That's really I, remember, I remember sitting Astro on mine a few through, times. Astro came through and absolutely, like, destroyed ruined them. the game for them. Yeah. And, wow. and they just, they couldn't create quality to compete. I, I think they still release headsets, if I'm not mistaken, but... Don't try to sponsor if me. you're gonna... <laughs> <laughs> you can go out and get a headset. You can get Astros, if anything. That's probably yeah. what most gamers will recommend to somebody. It's like, oh, get Astros. Or there are a few other names that I can't remember off the top of my head that float around. There's there's a, there's a few out there now, but they ain't paying me, yeah. so I'm not saying nothing. You know what I mean? Fact. I'm trying to collect that bag. Uh, we got to go back and bleep the word Astro whenever I said it. Man, you're making it way more hard work. I'll just leave it in this one. Astro, they can come sponsor me. I've got my A50s on right now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think this is a long star. Doesn't it won't matter. Uh last question from Fixer Sack this week is from Joel Is it Petty? E E T T E U I Petty? Oh that's great. I think so. Uh when do you think we will see next gen games running on the Series X? I know many people got the consoles in the media, but Thanks for rubbing it in. But do you think they will be given new games to show its capabilities as well? I think if we actually had good... I think this is the difference you'll see between Sony and, play, and Xbox. Sony have a first-party lineup of games that, yeah. are, that are new, which are exciting to some people. Spider-Man, uh, Demon Souls... I'm looking forward to that Destruction Derby type game. Um, like they have for li the Little Big yeah. Planet game, um, Sackboy. Like they actually have like a first party lineup of games. So I think when they, when you see their previews, that's gonna you're gonna see them showcase those games. With yeah. Xbox, we're we're getting Flight Sim, we're getting um, Gears um, Tactics, games that are already out on PC, and I think that's why we're not seeing it 
in the way we probably would have liked to while we're waiting so bloody long on um, games. Again, it might just be a weird way they've embargoed things as well. We don't know. They might already yeah. have games. Because the way, the way that it seems like the embargoes are coming up this gen is like, you can say you have the unit, check. Now you can confirm load times, check. And then, then the hard drive stuff comes out afterwards, check. Like, I could see it just being a long checklist and, and games are at the end of it. I, I guess it's kind of a way for them to like continue to like build hype and conversation around the console. And yep. that makes sense. Dude, um, I, to, 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 let me interject for two seconds, which is, when have you ever known a console to be handed back to influencers and press two months before yeah. the console is coming out? That's ridiculous. Yeah. I, I think that's to make up with a very late announcement of the price of the console and the release date. I think this um, was the plan all along, though. No, I, I agree. That was just a joke. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I, and I think this is this is them being in, very in touch with the modern times and how information travels in the modern times. You get the product earlier into people who can persuade people onto getting consoles like the game the console is already pre uh, out of stock in most places you're not gonna be able to pre-order it but what they're looking at next is launch date when they say they're gonna have more consoles right and after that and if there's already buzz building now and by the time it launches it'll be um amplified that it just keeps building and building and building and turns into this huge snowball that can't be stopped you know i think it's smart i think it's one of the smartest things yeah. they've done um in a long time xbox with like again I may be upset that I didn't get one, but um, but giving it to influencers early, giving it to the right people early, yeah. they're giving it to the right people early in terms of, I'm not talking about from a diversity point of view and things like that, which I've seen there be a problem with, with it just being very strictly white men um, getting the, getting it. You're not seeing it from a woman's perspective. You're not seeing it from um, other people's perspectives, but I'm talking about with the digital foundries, with this IGNs, with the, the game spots, the big places, like you're getting it in the hands of the right people to give us the right information. Digital foundry every year, every time a new console comes yeah. out frame rates, you know, that's where you're going to find out the best frame rates, resolutions. They are the place to go. They and absolutely and the way they've built hype is like none yeah. other. It's yeah. ridiculous. They build so much hype for Xbox. They did it with the with the with the Xbox One X as well. We're just like, yeah, no, this is this is dope. Yeah. Like, I li I like what they've done in terms. They I like the embargo stuff as well, where it's like we're gonna drip feed you. We're gonna let the creators yeah. drip feed you content to keep you always engaged in its content as well. Yeah, where it's not. It's it used to really be this like one drop of news, where now it's sort of like. It's what they wanted E3 to be this year, where it was like, here's game news over this time. It doesn't work. <laughs> no. It works with one console where you're slowly revealing more of the more of the capabilities of the console, right? Um, I also think getting it into create like word of mouth is so powerful. And we talked about this before on the podcast. And that's really like what Microsoft is going in on here. It's like people are going to talk about our console. That is going to make more sales of our console than most commercials we could pay for and most advertisements we could pay for will do because first you have to get gamers to want it then they'll get other people to want it and that's when like the commercials start working even more where it's like people have heard about xboxes and all this stuff from their friends and they see a commercial they're like oh that actually looks kind of cool maybe yeah. i do want that mm. interesting times ahead crush i'm not gonna say i'm not gonna lie i'm so excited for next gen dude i'm we're so dude, excited we're so, we're so close. close i know can you believe we just pre-ordered it we're so close that's weird it's weird. Yeah. Uh, let's jump into what's been in our box. What have you been playing this week, man? Anything on the on the old Xbox you've been playing? Uh just the regulars, you know, some smite, some apex. Nothing smite? really like some smite. Yeah. You've gone back? I fixed and Ben. I only I only play with Ben. I don't like ben. loaded up play by myself. Okay. I did that for a day or two, and then I came to the realization. I'm done with these toxic games. I don't play outside of Xbox, but I don't play League of Legends anymore. I don't play none of these games are anymore. Are you excited for uh, uh, World of Warcraft? Yeah. Not coming not on Xbox. It got delayed? Got delayed. Ah, uh, sorry, dude. It was in really bad shape, apparently, from a lot of people who are in the beta. Ah. Uh, so they're putting it off, yeah. That's good. Yeah, honestly, like I said, I had a weird week this week in terms of like mood and stuff. So all I've played, to give you a quick rundown, um, is yeah, it's usual culprits, which is obviously um, 
Call of Duty, and what else have I played? Call of Duty, Resident Evil 2, uh, and I've been, and oh my god. Every time I, I think about Resident Evil 2, I just, I just regret how we didn't give it Game of the Year. And the fact that you, you've ruined my it podcast. Didn't. You've ruined I, my wait, podcast. I ruined it because it didn't get Game of the Year. Yeah. I don't think it deserved Game It deserved Game of the Year. Every time I play that game so. again, I do say so. I do say okay. so. Okay. Okay. All right. You know what, Fix? You own this podcast. I should have just. If you really wanted to, you could have been like, I veto. I should have. I could have said, I should have vetoed it. I should have just edited you out of that podcast. You could have. You could have made I it really awkward by done editing that. me out. Yeah. Um, and yeah, obviously, FIFA 21 is now. You've got your preview stuff. The game's out today for Ultimate Edition users. It's more FIFA. It's honestly, that's honestly what it feels like. Doesn't feel as much too drastically changed. Um, it's new ultimate team layout is very good. I really like its new ultimate team layout, actually. In terms mm -hmm. of yeah, the microtransactions are there. Obviously. They're not going anywhere um until it's illegal to do so. But they've made it the SPCs are a thing where you can earn coins and earn cards and earn packs um by yeah. doing these little challenges. They've actually laid it out in a way that it's it was it, to, to to FIFA players. It made sense last year. This year, I feel like it's going to make sense to everybody. The way mm, they've separated, it more yeah, very much so. I feel like where it's like very much so. This is games, and this is what you can do. You can play this type of match. You can play this type of match. This is SPCs, and this is what you do. You do this, and you do this, and you do this. Here is the transfer market, and this is what you do here. Like I feel like, like just the UI itself is so much better this year. Um, mm. the in in Ultimate Team specifically. Do those reset daily? No, like daily. Some, some are daily, do. some are weekly. Um, you've got they've got this like this season. It's like when I say season pass, it's not a season pass. It's like a it's more like a battle pass thing where you're you're constantly leveling up um, with the the little accomplishments that you do, which then unlock like so you'll get like um, the first one will be like a, a new banner for your club or a new badge for your club, and then as you work in, they say gold pack of a uh, gold pack your club but then it's like a, a loan card of like a christian erickson or someone big out there for nine games so you actually get to experience which again they had all this last year i just think the way it was laid out wasn't as good as it is now and maybe it mm. was just as good but from an idiot like me who, who dabbles in ultimate team it didn't work as well where this year i feel like it's very and to be fair shout out to toxic chris he's been helping me in chat a lot um but yeah it feels like it's laid out very well this year do you think I could go in and find this stuff very easily myself? Yeah, if you, you if you read struggle? it, it depends. It's one of those things where, again, it's like, if you did the, if you read it, yes. It's like anything. I try and tell people that all the time, which is like, it's like me. I'm like, I'll just skip, 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 skip. And it's like, what do I have to do? It's, it's my fault. I don't oh, know I do what I have to do. Yeah, it's, yeah. but it's my fault. I don't know what the game was trying to explain it to me, but I'm like, get to the game, get to the game. I think it'd be the same with this, where like the game would try and explain it to you perfectly, but you're just like next, 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 next. I, I just want to play the game. Yeah. I just want to spend all the in-game currency. I don't want to actually like learn how to do yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I hear you. So yeah, I think um, I think so it's new friendly though. Yeah. Overall positive experience experience with FIFA so far. I'm, uh, I just miss FIFA. I miss playing FIFA. I miss. I know. I know it's a filthy casual game and ugh, football talk for a second here. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, but yeah, no, it's a it's it's a great experience. I'm looking forward to bringing back the my Xbox and me uh, pro clubs thing. So we'll be coming back in for uh, every Fridays. I'm hoping at about six o'clock till around seven, eight, nine, whenever we do it. Till uh, hoping we can get Crash to play this year. Because he didn't play last year. You might get year. me for one week. I might, I might, I might, uh, pop Why don't you just play week. your 10 hours? Wait, I guarantee, I'll guarantee you I'll play one week. Okay. I, I, That's all I can, I can't offer you my total 10 hours. <laughs> I, I expect, you know what? I respect that. 10 hours only be like three weeks though. You realize that, right? Yeah, that's a lot of weeks to play FIFA. A whole year? Out of three weeks out of a whole year? That is a lot of time. That's 10 hours, Crash. <laughs> That's it's more than three <laughs> times as much FIFA as I played last year. <laughs> good point. Just... Good point. Um, but yeah, that's it. That is it from me on what I've been playing this week. Uh, let's jump into this week's dashboard crash. Uh, our first story uh, news this week is that Cyberpunk has officially gone gold. CG Project Red has announced that Cyberpunk 2077 has officially gone gold ahead of its November 19th. Excited? 
Oh man, I am so excited for this game. I think this is the next like game that I'm actually like looking forward to. Well, by Assassin's that I'm Creed. I'm really excited for. I'm more hyped for this than Assassin's Creed. Fair enough. You like Assassin's Creed? I, I've been... Hidden Blades. Hidden Blades back. Yeah. You, Chris, I, I okay, wait, 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 wait. Do you remember? No, no. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'll let you go first. You can go first. No, nah, you go, go first. first. Just say you first. You first. Okay. I've been I, burned by the last two assassins. <laughs> just, just let me, you know, I'm sorry. Let me blow it out, and then you got, you got, then you got the stage fixed. Just let me, you know. Um, I've been burned by the last two Assassin's Creed, and not their bad games. Just not what I wanted from them. That while I'm hopeful for this, um, <clears throat> it could still end up being like an Assassin's Creed that I don't want. That isn't really up my alley. That isn't something I expect. I expect to like uh, Cyberpunk. So if one of these, if these both let me down, I will be way more disappointed in Cyberpunk than I would Assassin's Creed. And I'd probably end up enjoying Assassin's Creed more than I would Cyberpunk. So my plan. So what I was going to yeah. say to you is. Okay. I remember how hyped you was. Oh, coming dude, I was off so of the Assassin's Creed. Oh my God. So oh my God. Jumped in my Twitch so chat. Oh my God. That looks amazing. Do, do, do. Now oh, we get so here. Hyped. We're like, yeah, whatever. I was so hyped. I'm still very hyped. I, I've i gone back and watched that trailer a few times, I'll be honest, Fix. It does things to me, you know? It just does things. I'm glad um, it does things, I'm glad. I, uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, don't get it wrong. I just expect more out of Cyberpunk, where with Assassin's Creed, it's more of like, it could be what I want from it. The trailer, the, cin the problem with Assassin's Creed is the cinematic trailers always get me for Assassin's Creed when they do them. They're usually fantastic. But the gameplay doesn't isn't always like representative of the trailer necessarily. Fair enough. What um, about you? I've got FIFA now, which is what yeah. I was excited for. So I've got my casual game. Yeah, I think in my head I'm I'm super excited for Assassin's Creed over Cyberpunk, which okay. I'm sure to some people is like, oh, how dare you? I think it just comes first as well. And I know now I'm like, I'm get, I'm trying mm. to get ready, like my head ready. I've got nine days. Yeah. Nine days to beat Assassin's Creed. Mm. Nine days. That's the before, that's Cyberpunk. before Cyberpunk comes out. Can I really you do are... that realistically? No. It depends how they do the leveling system, and if they're like you can just go through the main story like and focus that down. But the question is, would you want to play that way? Probably not. That's what I was saying to people in chat the other day, which was like. I also don't want it to impact. They brought back hunting. You know how much I loved hunting. We used to sit and talk, uh, and I would just yeah. sit there for hours hunting, like the whole time. Yeah. So I also don't want it to impact my experience of Assassin's Creed, considering I have loved the last two, no, the last three, the last three Assassin's Creeds. No, two. Two. No, uh, Origins, uh, Origin and Odyssey. Yeah, yeah sorry, yeah. Um, the last two. You're like, So for me, I'm like, oh, I just... I don't know. I, but yeah, I'm, I am excited for Cyberpunk, obviously. Congratulations to the team uh, over at CG Project Red for going gold. Now, with that, unfortunately, we have to talk about uh, the studio heads responding to mandatory crunch reports. Uh, CG Project Red head of studio Adam Badolski, Badolski responded to a Bloomberg report about a mandatory crunch at the studio, saying the move was one of the hard decisions I've had to have to make. But quote, uh, but nothing, uh, sorry, but noting Cyberpunk 2077 development will be, quote, well compressed for an extra hour they put in, uh, well compensated, sorry, for an extra hour um, they put in, end quote. So obviously this is absolutely blown up on uh, social media, Chris, yeah. because uh, back in 2019, Jason Shara's Kotaku, uh, Kotaku, like, had a quote from them saying how they were not going to force the team to crunch. Like that was something yeah. they were not going to do. They were not going to, to force crunch upon their, their team. Obviously this all comes out. Jason's very much the person who, who blows this up over on uh, Bloomberg. Um, and it's been a weird one, right? Where like a lot of people have come out, obviously damning CD project red for this because yeah. Mandatory crunch is not acceptable. Forcing people to work weekends when they're already working five days a week isn't really acceptable. And then there's the group of people that have also come out, not for it, but have also come out understanding it a little bit, who, who work in other forms of um, 
of medium artistry, stuff like that, art stuff. Like, we're like, we all crunch. In one way or another, a lot of people crunch. It's just that video game crunch is usually done in a very scummy um, and disgusting way. Where are you yeah. falling down on it? Where are you? Are you, um, are you on which camp are you at? Are you, are you at the camp that is... I'm the understanding camp. Because, uh, so I, for people who don't know, I went to college for computer science. So I've, I've had teachers who have been uh, software engineers. I, one of my best friends, game developer, right? I've talked to them. Crunch is a thing that happens in the, in the industry. In the programming and software development industry, even outside of gaming, yeah. crunch is a thing that happens. And the resolution to crunch isn't as easy as you'd assume. Because you could say, hey, all you have to do is hire more people. Or delay the game. Do you hire... Or delay the game. Cyberpunk did that twice, right? Yeah. Yeah, they delayed it twice. They delayed it a bunch. There's a point where the game has to come out and they can't delay it anymore. And if you want to hire people, you might say, oh, instead of delaying it, uh, instead of making them more crunch for that one week, you could hire more people. They would have had to hire people a lot earlier because you also have to teach the people how the programs and how everything they're doing works. Because even if they're used to that engine, there could be differences in how they're utilizing the engine that would need to be taught. And that delays production. There's a lot of like ifs, ends, or buts with this, and where it's like the two solutions I see are A, you do crunch and you compensate them for the crunch. Yep. Which CD Project Red is doing, which is a good, right? Um, and then B <sighs> is you hire people early, right? You hire people early enough in the process, but that's like we don't want to spend that money. Right? Put it this way. I as someone, as I've got older, I'm 28 and yeah. I have very limited time. I do not have kids yet. All I'm saying is, I think I, I think I saw a report out there saying they were going to get about a thousand pound each extra on mm. on the crunch. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. If that was me, you can keep your thousand pound because mm. time is my most valuable um, resource to this day. Mm. Even to this day, so, like there are there is nothing I want to do more than just spend time with my partner. Like we, you never know how long you've got in this world, right? And for me, I, I I agree with you in everything you said. I've worked in, I've worked doing music stuff. There's been crunching that. Um, obviously, just being a content creator, there's crunching that. You have to hit deadlines. Like there's like you work a lot of hours. I understand working lots and lots of hours. I can't stand anything that's mandatory. Like especially if mm. you've got a place that's that's known to be kind of it's been a weird one with reports coming out of there of like how work how it is to work there we know the video game just industry working it's always been it's still weird you know like there's certain things that come out that are not so good i'm not yeah. i'm not for anything that's mandatory i come from retail work God. as well so mandatory anything for me is where i i kind of draw the line and i will I will kind of con condemn that. Um, to give credit where credit is due, let's give the read the, the whole statement, which is uh, from uh, Badolski, who says, quote, the last six weeks are our final sprint on a project. We've all spent so much of our lives on something we care for deeply. The majority of the team understands that, uh, understands that. This is one of the hard decisions I've had to make, but everyone is well compensated for every extra hour they put in. And like in recent years, 10% of our annual profits of our company generated in 2020 will be split directly among the team. So again, we don't know what we don't know what the actual outcome will be. Um, yeah. And again, I would if this was me, I'd probably be someone who bought into the crunch, honestly. I'd yeah. want that project to be look the best it could look, play the best it can, be the least amount of bugs it possibly could. I just don't want... What about if you are the person who's like, this is my kid's birthday this month? Yeah. Or, I, I think... or my, my wife's pregnant this month? Or yeah. whatever the case may be. Or my mum is sick from COVID. Or, yeah. my, or in case with my mum, when she got cancer. Imagine that was the case, and then they're like, well, you have to work weekends still. Yeah, I, I think there needs to be some sort of leeway and, and work. You have to work with the people who are working there. And if somebody can't do it, they can't do it, right? Um, I, I do think like one of the worst things about the game industry in general is that a lot of people who work in it are salaried. And if you work, if they make you work, if they make mandatory crunch and you work an extra shift a, a week, an extra day, or they make whatever you work extra hours you put in. or whatever yeah. it is, yeah, you don't get extra pay for that. 
I think that's the big takeaway is that a lot of times crunch happens because companies can abuse the salaried workers. Uh, companies can abuse the way they employ their workers. And that's where the big issue lies. Um, my whole point is like, I don't think that crunch is necessarily evil. I think they need to find a way to efficiently do crunch and not force it on people. I completely agree. With I don't, you. yeah, I don't, ever, I don't think it's ever, I don't think there's ever going to be a, ty- I, a place where it's like, if it, it's like if yeah i don't know i don't know it's, it's, I, it's I a hard one I, yeah i think a company's idea is like we want to save money how do we save money we crunch how do yeah. we crunch we screw over our employees to a degree right yeah and i don't think that's what the, this is here i don't actually think no, that's i, what I, I agree i agree so I, like um cd project red seems and as far as we can tell from the outside looking in they seem to be taking all the right steps they seem to, they delayed the game several times they just had a a ad play at the nba finals yeah. right it's like this game is ready to come out they cannot delay this game anymore they're going into crunch they're going to compensate them in some way they give them 10 percent of the profit revenue which i didn't even know about which is dope right because most companies don't even do that no. um so they seem to be taking all the right steps but it really is when it comes to crunch and how developers deal with crunch it is a case-by-case basis and we as the people on the outside who just play it know. we just play the games yeah. man we just yeah. play the we games because i can guarantee you a bunch of people are complaining about this are just gonna be like oh cd project red and all their crunching and all that stuff and complaining about it and like i'm not gonna get the game they're still gonna buy the game they're gonna play the game and they're gonna enjoy the game and they're gonna forget all about the crunching right probably um i i really do think that unionization in the games industry has to happen to a degree at some point to sort of combat crunch where they're properly compensated for crunch if crunch becomes a thing that they have to do and there are avenues like hey my kid's sick hey this that and the third yeah i have i can't do this then Mm -hmm. they are allowed to exit and not do that right and they're not punished for it and they're not like go or all these other things name doesn't go in credits things of that nature Uh, moving on, Minecraft Dungeons Crossplay and Howling Peaks DLC announced uh, at DLC and Apocalypse Plus difficulty coming in 2020. I apologize. Uh, Minecraft Dungeons will be getting a free update that adds crossplay in November 2020, uh, while the Howling Peaks DLC season pass and Apocalypse Plus difficulty will be added in December. Ruled at Minecraft Live 2020, Minecraft Dungeons will allow Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC uh, users to all play together. Unfortunately, cross save is still not supported. The Howling Peaks DLC will feature a new boss, the Tempest Golem, who can uh, conjure up Howling Winds to make your life that much more difficult. Speaking of difficulty, Apocalypse Plus will add 20 new difficulties uh, after Apocalypse uh, BII, which is 10? 7. You're right, it would be 7, like Final Fantasy 7 Remake, which we don't get here on Xbox. Um... And it increases. Do you know what? I've never been good at new. Like I know V is five. So why did yeah. I go ten? Because that would be an X. Maybe you thought it was two Vs. It, I, like V times two. You were thinking about it in the quick math sort of way. Two plus two is four minus one. Yep. that's ten. Quick math. <laughs> um, <laughs> of course. Uh, but yeah. So there's a bunch of news that came out from uh, Minecraft Live. Did you watch it, Crash? Uh, I love Minecraft and I definitely watch this. Thank yeah. you. you know. I'm going to let you talk about it though. I, I didn't watch it. <laughs> uh, well, I didn't watch awkward. it either, unfortunately. But there was a little bit more news that came out. This one's from IGN to Adam Banker, who says Mo Yang has revealed Minecraft Caves and Cliffs update, which arrived in summer 2021. And as the name suggests, it will make some big improvements to caves and underground exploration and adds more spectacular uh, mountain uh, generations. Um, I'm super excited for this, to be honest with you. Anything that ever adds into my experience of when I go mining is always fun for me. Yeah. That's my favorite part of Minecraft is getting lots of the mine taking equipment down there and figuring that out. Go on, Crash. I know you're about to say something dumb. Your, your, your favorite you're gonna, part of I know it's not, Wait, stop. I know exactly what you're fucking going to say now. No, it Can isn't. My favorite part Can of Minecraft is not sorting out boxes. Wait, no, I was going to even say that. Oh, okay. I was going to make a joke about how your favorite thing to do in a game called Minecraft is mining. 
It has uh, nothing to do with sorting out boxes. I thought you you're, were very, the, I, you're very, very defensive here. I would never accuse you of being addicted to What's the number boxes? one thing you have a go at me for when we play Minecraft? Not letting me touch the boxes. <laughs> Not letting me do what I want. That's my problem. You can do what you want in your I just want to have fun in the game. And I try throwing snowballs at Fix. And Fix just I get angry. angry. <laughs> Crush, you're out of here. I'm done playing with you. <laughs> He's not lying. I do play Minecraft a little bit too fun. serious. I really want to get it on PC. Like, I really want to get it on PC. But I've been saying it for years now. And play the Java version? I want to just play everything, man. All the, the, all the fun stuff. Oh, so like all the, 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 the custom stuff and all that stuff? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Minecraft. So good. Minecraft Mondays. So good. <laughs> Minecraft. FIFA Fridays, Minecraft Mondays, Siege Sundays. There you go. That's the rest of your streaming schedule for the rest of your career fix. I'm done. You can pay me yearly. Cyberpunk Saturdays. That doesn't work. Can't play Cyberpunk. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Microsoft Fight Sim Studio working on a new project for the... Uh, sorry. Microsoft Fl uh, Flight Simulator Studio working on a new project for the Focus Home Interactive. A representative uh, for Microsoft confirmed that Asbo Studios is working, is only working on a new game uh, for Focus Home Interactive, not a new project for Microsoft. Uh, the correction translates from the original La Ta uh, Lay Tribune story, Tribunal story, as follows. Quote, What's for sure is that flight simulator will keep us busy for quite a long time it's something we're engaged we're engaged for the uh th for the next 10 years to come maybe more we will maintain the current team may uh be refocused uh, it apart from our partnership with uh, focus home interactive the french uh publisher behind a plague style innocence great game uh for a new game uh, we have nothing to announce at the moment the big news there, Crash, that they're saying they're, they're pretty much committed to flight sim for the next 10 years. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, do you think this decision was after it became the success that it was, or this was sort of planned beforehand? I think it was planned. I feel like it, you're not going to put... When was the last time we got a, a flight sim? The last time we got uh, a flight sim would have been in 20... Oh. E 2002? 2003? Is that right? Um, I could be way off. Seven? Seven? Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. I'm, yeah. A bit, I'm a bit off there. Um, but it's a long window. So it, may, it makes sense to me for them to just keep updating um, and keep growing the audience that they have there, to be honest with you. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward. WB Interactive. Uh, president responds to ongoing de uh, debate over supporting J.K. Rowling. This one again was taken from IGN by Joe Scrib Scribbles. Warner Brothers Interactive President David Haddon has responded to the em to employee questions around the company's involvement with working with J.K. Rowling. Following the author's repeat transphobic comments saying, I might not agree with her stance, this is a quote, I might not agree with her stance on, the on a range of topics, but... I can agree that she has the right to hold her opinions. Krish, where do you come down on this statement? Because I've got to say, I really do have to say, I don't agree. And usually I'd swear and shout and get all loud, but I've decided to try and be a new fix and not, and not blow my top off at every dumb thing that a president says at a company because they're out of touch with the regular community of people because they're so yeah. filthy, stinking rich that let me go, Crash, that they okay. think no, you, that, you it, got, is, they think that it is okay yeah. to say things about a whole group of people. You think it's okay? Let me tell you here right now, as I've told you time and time again, my Xbox audience, if you are racist, if you are transphobic, I don't want you here. Simple as. I don't want you here. I don't want you listening to me. I don't want, I don't care if you're racist to not black people. You're just racist to Asian people or whoever. I don't want you here. Cle simple as. No, it is not okay. We cannot all agree on this quote, which is, but we can all agree that she has the right to hold her opinions. No. No, no, yeah. no. You do not have the right to be a racist. 
or a yeah. bigot or a sexist or I, a transphobic person. Yeah. You do not have the right to do that. I'm sorry, you don't. I, I think the issue here is also deeper, is that she's she's saying this, she's doing this thing, she's hurting this big community, A, that loves her games, but also it's like, well, she's hurting IP, community. Yeah. yeah, and then you are supporting her by the statement, you're supporting her by the money she I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to go out on the whim of saying supporting her. I understand, I understand the, the, um, that David here has a job to do. Yeah. He, he's the president at Warner Brother. They own one of the biggest IPs in the world that happens to be Harry Potter. Again, we had this discussion a couple of weeks ago on how hard it is to figure out what the hell to do here. Laura on Twitter has yeah. very much been saying, do not buy this game, do not support this game. And I even said again, if this was a racist person who made this IP, would I be okay with buying this game? I don't know. Again, I don't know. Yeah. It's it's so bloody hard. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm not just having a go at David here, Mr. David uh Haddon. Uh but no, we cannot all I just wanna let you know on that topic. No, we cannot all agree yeah. that she has the right to hold th that opinion. She doesn't have the right to. Yeah. I mean he he could have really just said, I don't agree with her. Well that's <laughs> I what don't agree with he her. does say he does he does say that um he may not agree with her on a range of topics, but he should have just left it there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's yeah. like, just leave it there. You don't have to add that end bit. Because that end bit creates a sort of sympathy for her, right? And I, I you think don't he need tries to, to sympathize yeah. with her at this point. Yeah, I'm sure that he's like, I'm sure that he's had conversations with other people at the company and it's like, okay, well, we don't want to anger JK Rowling. We still want the IP, da 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 da. And all this, this, that, and the third, that if a statement has to be made, this is the statement you're making. This was a dumb statement to make. I think this so. This was a dumb stance to take. I, have, I this think is, so. You are not on the right side of history here. You are... No, just no. You know? I, I, I was actually prepared to like go off on this topic, but you went ahead, and I'm, I'm going to just leave that to you. Idiot. Yeah. No, absolutely. It, it just... Why? Yeah, like... It, <laughs> where in 2020 are we? We've got a, you've got a president that yeah. runs around outside the house when he has COVID. Fucking, yep. we've got people that are being transphobic. Like, what? Yep. Like, I'm, I, I, I don't understand. I'm not saying I understand everything when it comes to like trans people and things like that. I'm not saying I even agree with everything. But you know what I am going to say? It doesn't necessarily affect me, so I'm not going to take it away from others. Like, I'm yeah. not about to just be like, no, it's no, no, I'm not about it. I'm not about it one bit, Crash. Not about it one bit. And I'm always down to learn. Let me tell you, always down to learn. And that's what a lot of these, I just, I just think you get to a point where you're so rich and so powerful that you feel like you can just say what the hell you want and there's no repercussions of it. Yeah. We're not going to well, condemn people is... for having like these type of comments. What? Yeah. I mean, there's also the problem of like these type of comments happen, and then as many people as there are that would condemn them, there's people like uh, shouting out that they're bravery to make a statement like that, or da da da. They're they're yeah. shouting out bigots. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's just we live in a crazy time. Yeah. I, again, education is key. Yeah. Don't take me as my old me. Take me as my new me. Simple. Yep. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered has been announced, Crash. EA making a remaster, Crash. Now, this has got people talking, let me tell you. It's not the remaster that people wanted, but yeah, we still got one. Uh, with the release date of November 13th, quote, unleash a savage sense of speed, both an outlaw and a cop in this timeless racing experience, updated for today's platform. Get crushed gem platform multiplayer, analog enhanced visuals, and all main DLC delivered at launch. And much more. It's time to reignite damn it. Reignite the pursuit. Do you think from now on, all the podcast notes, all the show notes, you could just read like that? So like never breaking that character. No, I'm not slow by Mike. He could do that easy. I couldn't do that. Uh, he, he definitely could. He could definitely do it. 
I couldn't do that. You think? Uh, you think we can replace you with Snowbike Mike? No, <laughs> he already he already <laughs> left us uh, for uh, Xcast, so no, I don't think he's going to leave Xcast to come back just to work with you. I know you're special. I don't think that's <laughs> special. I've got to be honest. I've got to be honest. One day, maybe one day, maybe one day. Um, Probably not. Uh, this remaster uh, version is coming to Xbox, PlayStation 4, uh, Switch. It runs at 1080.30 in docked mode on Switch. Um, also coming to PC, obviously. It runs at 4K60 on the PS4 Pro and the Xbox X. And 1080.60 on the base consoles crash. Excited? Nope. Me either. Games with gold this month, October. This is here. We are finally in October. New consoles just a month away. We have the Slayaway Camp Butcher Cut available from October 1st to October 31st. We have Mad of Skya available October 16th to November 15th. We have Sphinx and the Cursed Mummy available October 1st to October 15th. And we have Costume Quest available October 16th to October 31st. Fresh. Let's plug, plug, plug and get ourselves out of here. We got to plug this week, dude. Twitch.tv forward slash crushnik. Oh my god, he's back! Ah, uh, maybe. I, <laughs> I don't. I don't talk in <laughs> in certainties. You know, just maybe. You know. Mm. Um. Yeah. And, and Twitter at crushnik place and on on YouTube, my Xbox and me. I don't got a YouTube page. Huh. I respect it. I respect it. I respect it a lot, Crush. I respect it a lot. Uh, yeah, you can find me everywhere at MC Fixer. Uh, the big thing I'm pushing right now is my Twitch channel. Since my YouTube channel is already uh, now monetized, I finally did it, Crush. I know. I saw. Congratulations. No. A lot of work. I can't say. I wish I could take all the credit. I can't. I've got two fantastic editors that have definitely helped me get uh, over the line. So shout out to uh, Good In Gaming. And uh, again, I don't know if he, I don't know where, what he goes by, Blue. Like, Blue Badu. I don't know if he goes by that or if he goes by his wrong, you know, who knows. They're behind the cameras. They're doing the God's work. The other one's a mystery. They're doing the God's work, if we're being honest with y'all. Uh, but yeah, you can find us everywhere on uh, My Xbox and Me. Go check out the My Xbox and Me YouTube channel. I'd love to hit that, uh, love to get that bite to a thousand uh, subscribers before the end of the year. We are well on track to do so, but just in case you're not, uh, watching, listening, checking out the content, please do. And uh, yeah, twenty twenty is gonna twenty twenty one is gonna be a big year for us. I feel like with new consoles and content and things of that nature, it's gonna it's gonna be a good year. So uh, keep supporting, keep enjoying the content, and thank you all for listening. Until next time, I will love you, leave you, and see you all later. Good. Bye.